Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. This is Basic Algebra. We're going to look at section 6.4, which is an introduction to point-slope form. Now, before we actually see what point-slope form is, we're going to review slope. Now, slope is defined as the change in y over the change in x, which we denote with the letter m. Now, in order to find slope, we need two points, an xy of one point and xy of another point. And it will denote which one's point 0.2 and which one's point 0.1. But what if we were only given one point, but we already knew the slope? This equation, which hopefully we can see that they're essentially the same equation, but notice there's no second point here. It's not denoted as a subscript of 2. So what if we have one point, but we know the slope? Well, we can simplify this equation, which is our slope equation, by clearing the fraction of the denominator. If you recall, if we have an equal sign, we can clear fractions. So my denominator is the quantity x minus x1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by this denominator. Now, if I simplify it, this reduces that. Anything divided by itself is 1. So I have 1 of these changes in y, y minus y1, which equals the slope times our denominator here, x minus x1. So now we've cleared the fraction. This equation is the point slope form of a line. Now we can use this if we have the information of a point x, y, and the slope. So sometimes it's important to know the name of a formula and not just know the formula itself. Because if we know the name point slope, if I have a point and I know the slope, this is the equation I want to use because that's its name, point slope. So let's look at how to apply this equation. Now, <clears throat> here we have a question that says, find the line with the given information of passes through the point 3, 6 and has a slope of negative 1 third. Now, in previous equations, if we were given the y-intercept and the slope, we were able to put it into y equals mx plus b form, which is our point slope. Point, or excuse me, uh, slope intercept. Here we have the slope, here we have the intercept. So this is our first method. This is the one we used before. But we're going to use it a little bit differently because we're not given the intercept. We have to find that value. And we could do it algebraically with the given information. So this is an x, y ordered pair. So I can plug this information in. y is 6. My slope is negative 1 third. But I don't know what b is. Oh, and excuse me, I do know an x value, which is 3. So I just put this value in. x is 3, y is 6, my slope is negative 1 third, but I do not know b. Well, if we look at just by plugging that information in, we only have one variable here, and we can solve for it. So method one is to take the point, take the slope, and plug it into our slope intercept equation and solve for the intercept. Now, if I do that, if I multiply 3 times negative 1 third, I get negative 1. 3 over 3 would reduce to 1. 1 times negative 1 is just negative 1. And now I can just isolate b. I can add 1 to both sides. So I get 7 equals, this is 0 plus b is just b. So I found that value. Now I have to reassess and say, OK, what information do I have? Well, I now know. The intercept, when x is 0, y is 7. And I know the slope is negative 1 third. So I can put that back into the equation. y equals negative 1 third x plus b, which is 7. mx plus b form. So now it's in this, this is the equation of a line that passes through this point and has a slope of negative 1 third. So if we just review, we plug in the information, we solve for b. Now we reassess the information of slope and b and put it into the equation to have the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. Now method two is using the point-slope equation that we discussed about a little while ago. Well, the point-slope equation.
basically says if we have one point, regardless of what that point is, and the slope, we can use this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my value. My y1 from my point is 6, because it's the only point I have, the one point. My m is negative 1 third. And my x is 3. And now all I have to do is simplify this equation. So if I do that, negative 1 third times x is negative 1 third x. Negative 1 third times a negative 3 is Negative times a negative is positive. 1 third times 3 is just 1. So I get positive 1. Now, to get y by itself, I just add 6 to both sides. And if we do that, we get y equals, because that goes away, negative 1 third x. 1 and 6 is 7. Now, hopefully, you notice that this method was actually a better flowing method as I like to look at it. We took the equation because we had a point and the slope, point slope equation. We have a point and a slope. So we just plug it in and simplify. Our final answer when we're done simplifying is exactly what we were looking for, the equation of a line in slope intercept. So if we look at this one, we had to plug it in, find a, solve for a value, then take that value and plug the slope and the intercept back into the original equation to get it. Here, we plug in the information given and simplified it to the answer. So point slope can be a very useful tool in, uh, when we're given a point and the slope. All right, we're going to uh, define a few other terms that we're going to come across in this section. And the first one is parallel lines. And I have this little symbol here. The symbol shows two lines. Uh, that don't intersect. And that symbol means the same thing as writing out parallel lines. So it's a little shorthand notation. Now, what is parallel lines? Well, parallel lines actually have the same slope. And that's what this tells me. The slope of one line is the slope of the other line, or the second line. So the slopes are equal. If they have the same slope but different y-intercepts, if we notice that, they're two separate lines. They're different lines. But they'll never intersect because their rate of increase or decrease is the same, the same slope. So that is the definition of parallel lines. Their slopes are the same. So if you're ever told that one line is parallel to another, if you know one slope, you actually know both of them. The other example that we'll come across is perpendicular lines. Now, perpendicular is a little bit more complex. And this is the symbol for perpendicular. What it means is two lines do intersect at 90 degree angles. So I put this little box in here to indicate that that angle is 90 degrees. They cross each other at 90 degrees. So if we look at that, what does that mean in terms of slope? Well, it means that the slope of one line is equal to the negative reciprocal of the other. Now, what a reciprocal is, a negative reciprocal, means that if we multiply the two slopes together, no matter what they are, if they are reciprocals, negative reciprocal, we'll always get negative 1 if we multiply them together. So what does that exactly mean? Well, let's say we're told we have a line with a slope of, let's say, 1 half. It's perpendicular slope, a slope of another line that would be perpendicular to this, would be the negative, so I change the sign, and reciprocal. Well, what's the reciprocal of 1 half? Well, if I flip it, I'd have 2 over 1, which is just 2, negative reciprocal. One more example. What if I had the slope is negative 3 halves? Well, if I'm looking for a slope that's perpendicular to this, I would Take the negative. Well, the negative of a negative is positive. Basically, just change the sign. So my perpendicular slope will be positive, opposite sign. And then take its reciprocal, 2 thirds. So negative 3 halves and 2 thirds are negative reciprocals. If I multiply negative 3 halves times 2 thirds, I will get negative 1. A negative times a positive is negative. The 3's would reduce, the 2's would reduce to 1. So I'd get negative 1. All right, let's see how this applies. 
Uh, we're going to combine both point slope and, uh, or slope and perpendicular and parallel. So if we look at this example, it says through the point 1, 2 and negative 2, negative 4. We want to find each line that follows these different circumstances. So here, well, I'm given two points. What can I do with two points? Well, I know I can find the equation, or the slope, excuse me, by using the slope formula. Two points, I can at least find the slope. So I'm going to do change in y, which is 2 minus a negative 4. So I'm going to use parentheses so I don't make a sign error. And for my x, I have 1 minus a negative 2. And if we look at this, two negatives make that positive. So 2 plus 4 is 6. And 1 minus a negative 2 would be 1 plus 2, which is 3. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. So it has a slope of 2. Now what information do I need? Well, let's think about what I have. If I want to find the equation of a line, I have some points, and I know the slope. Points, slope. Oh, I can use the point slope equation. So y minus y1, and I'm going to choose whatever point I fancy, and I'm just going to choose this one. y minus the y value equals the slope times x minus the x value. If I choose a point, I have to put it in both locations, x and y. And now I just need to simplify. y minus 2 equals 2 times x, 2 times negative 1. We've got to do that distri distribution. And now I can add 2 to both sides to get y by itself. And when I do that, well, we just happen to get 0. y equals 2x. This is an equation of a line that passes through both of those points. And there is a way to check it. Plug these points in. If x is 1, is 2 times 1 equal to 2? Yes, it is. So that point works. What about this point here? If x is negative 2, 2 times negative 2, is that negative 4? Yes, it is. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So I know this line passes through both of those points. So I checked my work. The next one says, I want to find a line that's perpendicular to y equals 6 through the point 3, 7. Well, if we think about the information we're given, this should be a red flag right here. y equals 6. There's no x involved. This is a horizontal line. And if we want to find something perpendicular to it, well, something perpendicular to it is going to be a vertical line, where if we recall, a vertical line is x equals some number. And we'll use a, x equals a. Well, we know it has to pass through this point. And what this statement says is that it is uh, never changing. x equals a number. Well, what point we have here tells me what that x value is. x equals 3. So x equals 3 is the equation of a line that is perpendicular to y equals 6, which is, again, a horizontal line. But it passes through the point 3, 7. Now, if we want to delve further into this, what is the slope of y equals 6? Well, the slope of this is 0. This would be my slope for the given equation, m1 equals 0. Well, if I take the negative reciprocal of that slope, I'm dividing by 0. That is undefined. The only type of line that has an undefined slope is x equals a number, which is a vertical line. It's going up and down simultaneously. All right, let's look at this one. Here, we're asked to find a line that's parallel to the x-axis through the point 2, negative 5. This one's very similar to this one, parallel to the x-axis. Well, let me draw a little Cartesian coordinate graph. This is the x-axis. If it's parallel to it, it has the same slope. The x-axis has a slope of 0. So if something's parallel to it, I'm looking for something that has a slope of 0. Same slope me is parallel. But it has to pass through the point 2, 5. Well, let's think for a moment. I have a point, and I have the slope, point slope. If we put this in the point slope, y minus the y value, a negative 5 minus a negative makes it positive. The slope times x 
minus the x value. And if we simplify this, well, 0 times anything is 0. So I get y plus 5 equals 0. To get y by itself, I can subtract 5 to get y equals negative 5. Now, if we just assess and think about it some more, the x-axis is a horizontal line. y equals negative 5 is a horizontal line. So essentially, it's a value down here. That would be my equation, y equals negative 5 below the x-axis. And this equation is parallel to the x-axis. And would it pass through this point to negative 5? One way to check your work is, well, is the y value negative 5? Unchanging? Yes, it is. All right, I'm going to do one more example, and then I'm going to leave this one for you to try. But let's see how we apply this, how we actually work through it. It says we want to find a line through the point 2, negative 5, but perpendicular to this line, y equals 1 third x minus 2. So I have to assess, well, the first thing is perpendicular. We know that they're going to cross at 90 degrees. So I want the negative reciprocal. Well, here is the slope of this line. Something that's going to be perpendicular to it has to be of opposite sign, and it's recipro reciprocal. So that's a positive 1 third. So the slope of the line that I want to find is going to be negative reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of 1 third is 3. So it has to be of opposite sign, and it's reciprocal. So now I know the slope. So what information can I use? Well, if I know a point and I know the slope, I can use point slope. y minus the y value, which is a negative 5. Two negatives make a positive. My slope is negative 3. And it's x minus the x value. And now I can just simplify. I'll distribute a negative times a negative gives me that positive 6. And now to get y by itself, I can subtract 5. And I get y equals negative 3x. 6 minus 5 is a positive 1. The equation of the line is negative 3x plus 1. Now, if we look at this, let's check our work. Does the point 2, negative 5 pass through this? And, or does this pass through 2, negative 5? And is it the negative reciprocal slope? Well, negative 3, we already determined that. And if I plug this value in, uh, if x is 2, is that equal to my y value of negative 5? Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is, in fact, negative 5. So this is the equation of the line. And I check my work, and I know that it's going to be perpendicular to the line I was given. So try this one yourself. It's very similar. The only difference is find the line that's parallel. All right, let's look at an application. It says in 1996, there were 135,000 malls or outlet stores or whatever in the US. In 2001, there were 152,000. If we think about what's given there, it's kind of like an ordered pair. But uh, we, we want to find out uh, some information about it. The first thing says, write an equation describing this situation that resembles what's happening here. Well, let's assume that 1996 is our reference point, year 0. So I'm going to say 1996 equals 0 for my x value. Well, what does that mean for 2001? Well, how many years later is 2001? Well, 2001 and 1996, the difference there is going to be 5. So this value is 5 in consideration of the number of years since 1996. We were also told that in 96, there were 135,000 of these stores. Well, if our input is 0, our x value, our output is 135. But realize that this represents the years since 1996, and this represents 135,000. So it has units. All right, and this information given, we're told in 2001, which we're determining is five years since 1996. And there were 152,000 stores. Well, if we think about our interpretation here, 
we can find the slope or the average rate of change from the number of stores in one year to the number of stores in the next year by finding the slope. If I do that, I can say, OK, let's call this y or x, y, 2, and this x, y, 1, 0.2 and 0.1. So my slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x, which is going to be 5 minus 0. Now, if I simplify that, I get m equals 152 minus 135 is 17. 5 minus 0 is 5. So I have 17 fifths is my slope. So write an equation describing this. Well, let's think about what information I have. I have the slope, and I have some points. So I could use point slope, but I identify this point as a special point. Because one of my variables, the x in this case, is 0. This is one of my intercepts. And the intercept, when x is 0, is the y-intercept. So I have the slope and the y-intercept. Slope-intercept is the equation of a line I'm looking for. So I can simply just rewrite it. y equals the slope, 17 fifths, times x plus the intercept, which is 135. We wrote an equation that describes the behavior of the number of malls per year. Now, using the equation, predict the number of stores in 2009. Well, let's think about this. If, if we're saying 1996 is our reference, our year 0, since that year, 2009 is how many years later? Well, it's 13. If we took 2009 minus 1996, we'd get 13. So <clears throat> I'm just going to use the equation. And my input is? 13 years from 1996. And if I multiply this out, I'm going to get 221 over 5 plus 135. And if I simplify this, I'm going to get 5 uh, goes into 221, 44 and 1 fifth, or 44.2 plus 135. And if I add those two together, I'm going to get 179.2. Can I have 0.2 malls or 0.2 of uh, buildings? No. So I'm just going to round it down, because 0.2 would round down. And I'm going to say there's going to be 179,000 malls. Because units are important when describing an application. How does it actually apply? So we got 179. 1,000 malls. Now, the last part asked me to interpret the slope. And this is sometimes confusing, because sometimes the answer is so uh, uh, blatantly obvious, we might overlook it, you know, kind of, kind of uh, hiding under our nose, so to speak. Interpret the slope. Essentially, what this means is assess the units. Look at the slope, 17 fifths. To interpret the slope, I just introduce the units. Well, 17 represents the thousands of stores, because that is my y value. It's the change in y over the change in x. Well, it's the change in the thousands of stores. So I just introduce the unit. 5, well, that's my change in x. Well, my change in x is years. So what does this mean? To interpret the slope, I just have to look at the units. There are 17,000 stores, or malls, or whatever we want to call them, every five years. 17,000 stores every five years. We just interpreted the slope. Just basically write it out in words, 17,000 stores per five years. All right, so this has been 6.4, Introduction to Point Slope Form. Keep practicing, and thank you for watching.